checking out the video and welcome to Keeping It Real Fishing. Today we're going to be taking a look at the latest iteration of the New Tech Lures new jig. Uh, there's uh, some improvements to this over the previous generation and I'd like to show you this latest version which is called the Elite. Uh, so let's take a closer look at that and before we do let's just take a quick look at the first two uh, versions of this jig. Alright guys, so uh, you know before I even get into this, one of the things I'd like to just mention um, in keeping with my channel's name, this whole keeping it real thing uh, that's really kind of like my philosophy or my mantra and not every lure that I look at and I share with you guys uh, falls into this category but this is really the things that I look out for um, and a lot of you know that in this in the world of fishing we are constantly pitched items that we're uh, told are going to you know catch us more and bigger fish and so many lures that come out or you know tackle hardware they are incremental changes uh, hopefully in the right direction hopefully in an improvement and sometimes things are changing and I think they're even uh, it's a detriment I think they take a step backwards but when these first came out I want to say it's about a year and a half ago maybe even a little bit more from the filming of this video the date of this video I was immediately impressed because as soon as I started reading about it I realized that here's someone who is kind of building a better mousetrap uh, you might look at a jig, traditional jig, like this guy here, and say, well, what really else can you do? A jig is not a very complicated thing, right? We have a, a weight to make it sink, we have our hook to hook our fish, and we have some kind of guard to keep it from getting hung up in heavy cover. Um, you could change things, you could change the size of the hook, the density of the weed guard, how heavy you want it, but what can you really change? I mean, how much different can, can jigs be? Uh, and what I like is that the owner of New Tech Lures, a gentleman named Bo James, he realized that there were some things that weren't complete yet with the jig. Um, and so he addressed those. Now, I'll just mention real briefly, I think a lot of you guys who uh, maybe subscribe to the channel are familiar with these. Uh, I think we kind of travel in similar circles. If you subscribe to my channel and some of the channels I watch, you probably have heard of the New Tech Lures. But if you have not, let me just give you the quick once over. The real appeal here, there's, there's two main things that set these jigs apart. The first, as you can see, unavoidably, is you have this different kind of weed guard configuration, different than the traditional single row of bristles. You have these two uh, very large, they're singular, it's just one piece of a very uh, dense plastic. All right, so it's a different approach, and of course they're not in line. Straight down the middle is open, you have them off to the sides. Right, so that's the one main feature. And then the other thing is what uh, the manufacturers, I uh, say Bo James, he calls about these camming, or these cammed angles to the head. And as the light hits it, you could probably see those there. Uh, there's a very specific geometric shape to this head. And what those two things do <clears throat> are twofold. Uh, the head design makes it so that when this hits the bottom, it's always going to stand upright. So even as I was about to shoot this, I wanted one of these things laying on the side just to give you that side profile shot and you can't keep it like that because <laughs> if you try to keep it down they just they just get up and that's one of the things you know it's going to be uh, advantageous to you as the angler you throw this into the water and uh, you know if it's a flat bottom situation when this hits the bottom it's always going to be standing up um, you can see even from that opening sequence here if you drop these nine times at a time when they hit No matter how they bounce around, they're always going to find their way to be on top. And that all has to do with the, the surface and the planes of this head, uh, the angles, the weighting, and all the other things involved. I'm not exactly sure how, but basically it just doesn't want to be on its side. It wants to get up. Figures that's the one time I was able to do it, right? I think I got caught in something real quick. So that's the feature number one, is the head design. And the other thing are these weed guards. And uh, i got to tell you, they just are superior. They really, really do work. Um, there's a increased resistance over most of your traditional um, bristle guards. Now, of course, these could be different. Some manufacturers they have a higher bristle uh, density, so they might have you know 25 bristles or 50 or even more. But even some of the the um, kind of the stoutest ones I've ever felt are easier to compress than these guys are here. Now, you might say to yourself, "Well, isn't that?" kind of counterintuitive. Don't I want this guard to be 
protecting my hook. I don't want to get hung up, but don't I want it, you know, not too hard because I want it to be as easy as possible to set the hook? Well, you'd be right, but when you're fishing a jig, you're going to be fishing usually a very stout rod. And uh, today, you know, with the advent of braid, or not today, you know, going years back, a lot of people are going to be fishing jigs on braid or fluorocarbon. You're not going to have a lot of stretch. And so these things, when you first feel them, you might be a little apprehensive, say, man, that feels kind of tough. But I'll tell you from my experience and for anybody who's fished these, they can chime in. You'll see it on other, uh, other videos here on YouTube. These things, when you set that hook, are going to compress just fine. And you're going to get a really, really positive hooks, uh, hook set. Uh, Bo James has so many videos where he shows uh, basically how this works. It can't slide out of the fish's mouth, and he always shows that it hooks him in the top of the mouth. Now, when I first saw that, you know, he can edit the video any which way to only show those that get hooked in the top. And, uh, well, well what, first of all, why is the top important? Well, because the top is very bony. So if you're hooking the fish in the roof of the mouth, it's a very, very positive hook set. The chance of that fish getting off is slim to none versus the sides of the mouth, which are more skin and fleshy, and they're more liable to kind of rip as you're fighting the fish. So the top is where you want to be for the, for the, the hardest and the, the strongest possible hook set. Um, and like I said, he was showing all these things getting hooked in the head. And I was like, well, let me see for myself. So yeah, I've been fishing these for over a year. And I have to tell you, I mean, this is <laughs> no lie. Every single fish I have ever caught on these has been in the roof of the mouth. I kind of was expecting a few to be in the side, and you know, I'm sure statistically you can only catch so much sooner or later you're going to catch one and it's not going to right itself, it's going to, you know, go to the side, but whatever the elements are to this lure, whether it's the camming surface, the weed guard, or how they work interchangeably with setting the hook, and what this lure does when it's in the fish's mouth, um, all my experiences have actually been just as a manufacturer claims, it gets them right in the roof of the mouth, in that bony part and, and you're, you're good to go. You know, if you have that real trophy catch, you can feel pretty confident that you're going to get them in. It's a good fish. Battery's just wrapping me. Feels good though. <sighs> That's a good fish. Woo! <clears throat> Solid one. Oh, this is it. Mr. Bo James, there's your new tech jig. As per instructions, right in the roof of the mouth. Can't beat that. New tech jig. Sweet, very sweet. Fish on. Good fish too. Nice fish. It is a nice fish. That's a good one. I can get him out of this mud. go. Woo! That's a good fish right there, guys. It's a good sized fish. We're looking at probably close to four on that guy. If you could see, that's on that Savage Gear. That's that 3D flapping craw. Got on that New Tech uh, jig head. Beautiful. Alright guys, so it took a little bit of a detour there, giving you a little bit 
of an explanation that's really you know for you guys out there who perhaps are unfamiliar uh, even though I know these are becoming more and more popular which is a good thing uh, so let's uh, get back to what we were talking about now and look at the other styles uh, the first second and third generation what's changed and uh, what this new one uh, what we really want to talk about which is what this brings to the table in the first generation we had this brass hook and I don't know the manufacturer they were plenty sharp they were really sharp um, I don't know the gauge of it, but I could tell you subsequently, going into the second and third generation, the, uh, the thickness of this wire, the gauge, is heavier than the first generation. But we had a brass hook, and uh, namely what we, what we don't have here is a bait keeper. And that's something that, of course, you really, really want on a jig, um, otherwise things are just going to keep sliding off. So that was, that was something that didn't come out initially, and you know a lot of people were looking for it, but it wasn't very long, and then they came out with the second generation. They changed two things here. The first is we do have that uh, trailer keeper, that bait keeper on right there. You can see a little bit of a different configuration too. On the first one we had kind of this ball right there and that's where you would push your skirt up on in between the main head and that ball. And then they went to a little bit more common is you kind of have this flat conical section here. And so you would tie the skirt or whatever it is you're pushing up goes up onto that section there. And you also have the bait keeper. Uh, the hook has changed. It's a heavier gauge hook. I'm going off memory here. Uh, Bo or, um, oh God, what's, uh, I'm trying to think of the guy oh, um, who does the videos with him. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting your name right now. Um, he talked about the hook, and I believe this is an owner 3 aught hook, I want to say. Uh, but apart from that, the, what makes the lure special is you know, unchanged. We have the same camming surfaces on the head and we have the same dual weed guard configuration and the plastic is the same, resistance is the same, all the stuff that you're looking for in the, the jig remain the same. So now, now, <laughs> sorry for the delay guys, now we have the Elite and I saw these come out and I was really excited. I don't really hesitate on new tech stuff. Uh, I, I trust them as a company and I, I trust their innovation. And from the pictures online, here's what I thought and maybe you're thinking the same. I saw this hook and I said, wow, okay, cool, we got an even bigger hook. We're going to have a higher or a wider bite angle. And so while I didn't really miss any fish on this, and I don't think too many people do, I figured if we can open up this gap even further, hey, that's better, right? It's even a, a, every statistically, every chance you can get, you know, for that hookup. So if there's every once in a while, maybe you miss one, one on here because there isn't just enough gap, we're going to have a better chance of getting them, right? And it looks like that, doesn't it? It just looks like it's a wider, more open hook. And, uh, oh, by the way, this hook here, I believe, I just read it on Facebook, I want to say it's Trocar. It's definitely a Trocar hook. They're making a big deal of that. I want to say it's 5 volt. I read that someplace. But if that's incorrect, again, um, please somebody come in and, and correct me on that. Uh, the other parts of the jig remain the same. Camming surfaces are the same. Weed guards are the same. But what I want to show you here, guys, is doing some measurements. It's kind of like, it's almost like an optical illusion. So I measured two things here, and I'd like to share those with you. Um, the distance from, let me see, I could do, best do this here. The distance from the line tie to where the hook point starts. So that's one of the things I was interested in, is has this distance from here to here, increased right so is the point of the hook has it been moved further back or is it closer now I don't have any data but in my mind I always want this hook to be as far back as possible because when you set that hook as you're bringing this through the fish's mouth there's you know the fish's lips are going to open so the wider this gap and the further back it is to me the better of a chance you have of getting it in that fish's mouth even if it does start to kind of a lot of people use the term blow out if it kind of like really pushes its mouth open so I got to doing a little measurement here and what I found was that uh, there is no difference if we measure from let's see let's put our zero right there oh, let me show you guys and it should be 35 zero on the hook point and the line ties at 35 okay and so when we look at the new elites and of course we're going to see the same thing or not of course but that's what I found was interesting because just from a visual standpoint it looked like I don't know 
looked to me like the hook was not only more open, a larger bite, but it just kind of looked to me like it was set back further. So that distance is the same, right? It hasn't increased there. But the other one is this, right? From the shank where the hook is straight to where the hook point starts. And hopefully I can get some focus going here for you guys. Maybe on top would be easier. No, nope, I think this is the better way. There we go. So what we got there, if I put it right, let's see the zero right in the middle of the shank, we have 21 millimeters. From the center of the shank here where it's flat to the hook point is 21 millimeters. And the previous style is 19. Right, so there's a two millimeter difference. Now, uh, guys, I don't want you to take this the wrong way. Don't get wrapped up in this thinking like, you know, I, I wouldn't say that this has any bearing on the actual fishability. Um, but I guess that's kind of what I'm trying to say as well is I saw this and I thought that it was just so much a larger hook. And I guess what it, where I'm going with this is that if you have a bunch of these, I really don't think that you need to replace them with the new series. Um, and I'm not trying to say anything bad about New Tech Lures. I, I love them as a company and what they're doing. And I, it's a... Um, you know, this is a proven product. This is no BS here, but I just would hesitate that if you have a bunch of these already, I don't think that you have a lot to gain by buying a lot of the new ones. Uh, the hooks are uh, also, I'll mention, of a similar gauge. I think this trocar might be just a hair thicker. It's hard to see just visually. Uh, when I physically just hold them and try to bend them, again, this is really, really unscientific. I mean, I don't have a a way of measuring the uh, stress or the deflection or anything, but they they both feel really really strong, guys. I mean, you have got to have like a world record on here or something to bend this hook out. Um, they're saying actually in their marketing like the world's strongest jig. I don't know if it's just catchy language or if they actually measured something. I you ever say world's strongest anything? I get a little hesitant. I'm actually I wish they hadn't said that. I'm sure there are jigs that are stronger than this. I don't think this is the strongest jig in the whole world, but. Uh, again, guys, I just wanted to share with you some kind of in-depth observations. It's kind of what I do here. Uh, I try to keep it real on all the products, even products like this, which I love and I believe in. I just want to be objective and show you guys, you know, what I've found. So uh, that's pretty much it, guys. It's the new Elite Series. And if you don't have any of these new tech uh, jigs yet, definitely pick these up. Pick up the newest ones. You have a little bit of a wider opening, and everything else is the same. That makes it a great, great jig. You have awesome, awesome weedlessness. You're going to get them in the roof of the mouth seemingly every time. And when you drop it, and when it hits the bottom, it's always going to stand up straight. Um, what else can I show you? I got two colors here. I went with the camel color. It's just kind of like a dark green. And then, of course, I just went with black. And they offer a third. There's a brown color as well, but, um, you know, these are, these are fine. I don't think I need any more colors. And then I just picked up one uh, with a skirt on it, and I'll share this with you guys as well. If you ever pick up a new tech uh, jig, their skirts are, are pretty well done. And one of the things I like is that in the collar here, you'll see how it has the little holes built in for two rattles. There's one here, and there's one you can see right there. So you can put in some rattles onto this, which I really, really like. A lot of manufacturers, they don't include those little those little pipes there, whatever, to stick the rattles in. And if I'm fishing a jig, nine times out of a ten, I'm, I want a rattle on there. So, um, all right, guys, that's pretty much it. A pretty extended look at the new New Tech Lures Elite Jig. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. All right, everybody, thanks for watching.